Hello everyone, welcome back to this new episode. In the previous episode, we've been able to craft a malicious appointment, we triggered it, and we've received the hash on the attacker's machine, and we've been able to crack the hash's password. Today, we're going to take things a step further and send our malicious appointment to a user and then grab their hash. Let's get started. So let's continue on the remaining tasks on TryHackMe to get inspiration. So in order to weaponize this vulnerability, we can go to task four, and uh, it says that we could use the exploit published by Oddvar Moa. So generally what this script is doing, it's partial script, it's instantiating a new Outlook object and then trying to create an appointment and uh, yeah, it's specifying the recipient and then the most important part is this one. Reminder sound file, remember from the previous episode, it's the path or the UNC path to the attacker's box that listens on incoming requests, SMB requests or uh, web dev based uh, HTTP requests and then it's setting the override default to true, reminder set to true, and play sound to true. And then it's sending the email. So let's use that. The script has been already provided in the uh, TryHackMe's uh, vulnerable machine. So we can use that. So let me open a PowerShell prompt, and then CD into desktop and import. Can I make things a little bit bigger? Hmm, doesn't seem to work. So we want to import the module uh, CVE, the number, and then we can, we have access to the different commands. So the first, uh, well, the only command essentially that we need is this one, send calendar NTLM leak. So send calendar, hit tab for auto completion, and then we have a recipient option. And so the recipient in this case could be anything. I guess the thm.lock uh, is resolving to localhost. Let me just verify this real quick. Let's look up thm.lock. Uh, it's not existent, okay. Mm. What is the email address of the user? Yeah, so that's th test at thm.lock. So this is what we're going to use, test at thm.lock. And then, so the remote file path in this case would be our uh, attacking machine 10 10 119 17 uh, we want a path to something like uh, please subscribe dot wave and we want to just prepend two slashes and what else we need uh, we need also the meeting subject and the body okay time to do some uh, cool pretexts like this is a vulnerability. Yeah, I know it's not cool, but you know, meeting body. This is a zero click. You will get pwned even if you don't open it. All right. Let's verify that our responder is waiting for our calls and uh, let's hit enter here. So here it's just saying uh, a script would access your Outlook. We allow it, no problem, allow access. So here we have a response saying sendable true uh, I wonder why it's taking too much time. I hope it's working. Let's see. Allow. 
And yes, we have indeed received a notification, a reminder, as you can see here, and the sound doesn't work because it doesn't exist. But in Kali, we received a previously captured hash, which is nothing about the hash that we've already captured here, meaning that essentially we've been able to get the init ntlmv2 hash of the victim. Cool. Everyone is talking about this vulnerability and um, I think that TryHackMe has done a great job making this room, making it available for the public so that, you know, people get educated about this vulnerability, how to attack it, but also how to detect it because there's also a section how to mitigate and detect it for the blue team and the sys admins that want to protect their customers. So you can find the Sigma rules uh, to detect this attack. There's also Yara rules. This vulnerability is being exploited extensively in the wild. So some of the mitigations include adding users to the protected users security group. It prevents these users from using NTLM for authentication. Um, you can also block SMB445 outbound, but if the attacker is already inside, then they can relay or capture the net NTLM v2 hashes. You can also use this script that was provided by Microsoft to detect any attack attempts in your network and also disable the web client service to avoid web dev connection. This is not bulletproof, but at least it prevents the usage of HTTP outbound because generally this port is never filtered outbound on your perimeter firewalls. So I hope you learned something new. If you did, give this video a thumbs up and see you in the next video. As always, stay curious, keep learning, and go find some bugs.